All right, so in this video, we are going to learn about the performance options that we have to see exactly how well our ad performed. <laughs> so let's go ahead and dig in and show you what we got. Now, under performance by default, it gives us these options. Now, if there's ever something you don't understand, by all means, Facebook has made it easy. The, you can hover over the I and it lets you know. Right, so by default, this is what we're given. Now you can modify the columns, and I will show you that here in a bit, but you don't necessarily have to do that right away. Right, so maybe you just are curious on the delivery. It's gonna let you know several things, right? How many people it reached, and how many impress impressions, excuse me, that you got. Now, the reason now here's a key factor, right? This you got to look at frequency, right? Um, that means how many times did somebody see it? That's why this has a frequency of 1.35, right? So now if 9,400, I didn't mean to do that. If 9,494 people seen the ad one time, then there would be 9,494 impressions, right? So 1.35 uh, times per person means They've seen it once at least, and now some other people, roughly three, about 3,400, 3,500 people, have now started to see it for a second time. Now, frequency to me is important, right? Because there's a thing that's called ad fatigue, and after a while, people just start to ignore your ad, right? I mean, every day we're bombarded with thousands of different types of messages from TV, to radio, to newspaper, to magazines, obviously to Facebook, Twitter, I mean, remarketing ads, websites, there's so many different things that our brain is overwhelmed with and bombarded by all, everybody trying to get that person's attention. So separate yourself, right? When your frequency starts to get, I like to say around three, right? So that means that these 9,494 people or whatever your number might be, have seen your ad three times, I believe that you're going to get the results that were there, right? That was most allotted, right? After that, it's definitely not gonna perform as well and your cost per lead will start to increase because after somebody's seen your ad three times, if it hasn't resonated with them, most likely it's not going to get their attention. And if it does, like I said, later on, it'll eventually cost you more. So that's not the name of the game. We don't want that. Now, the next portion is engagement. This, each one is different, right? So let's go over each one of these. Now, this is what they define as someone who took an action. Now, obviously we can go into each section and find out what defines an action and in the details and related and so on and so forth. Now, Facebook saying there was 294 people. Now, under this portion there is the post reaction. So as it says here, when somebody goes in there and they like it, they make a face, they did some kind of reaction within the ad, that's where that number will come up. Post comments, as you can see, somebody has the option to reply, share, things of that nature. Excuse me, the sharing portion is there and the things of that nature is what I meant to say. But um, the comments really, are specifically when somebody says, hey, I'd like some more information, contact me, or whatever they might say. These will break these things down. Now, also right here, as you see too, it shows you your page likes and your link clicks. So here's some more information that can help you decide whether or not this is a good ad to continue to run, right? Is, are these objectives the objectives that you want? So go from there. I'm going to hop over to video engagement, but I'm going to go to another ad that we utilized for video. Let me go here to video engagement. Now, this portion to me is very important. I will go over in a bonus section on how to do remarketing, but right here is where I can find out when I made my video, how well did people respond to it, right? So once again, you can see the portions. This is the three second video view. So there was roughly, 
I was running two different types of ads here. 1,300 people had viewed the actual ad or the video, excuse me, for 13, 1,300 people had viewed it for three seconds. On that ad set, 900 people had viewed it for three seconds with this ad set and so on and so forth. Now there's a 10 second video view and the cost that it costs per view. And in addition to, there is the reach. Now those things are good and those things are great, but really you slide it over here. You, I don't know if you had noticed, but there's a little slide bar. Slide that over. And these last columns to me are what's important, right? So hover over people that watch 25% of your video, people that watch 50%, 75%, 95%, and who actually watch the whole thing. Now, if you have a video that is, let's just say it's 30 seconds, right? And we know that somebody watched 25% of it. Well, they only watched seven and a half seconds of it. And not bad, right? I mean, there's definitely ways that we could get that information out on TV or radio, which would be a lot more costly to you to do those things. But really what I like to do is I like to see those that, that reached, you know, the 50% mark, the 75% mark and the hundred percent mark. Because if you've watched a hundred percent of the video, I know, that there's something about you that interests you, uh, interests you what I have to say, right? What we have to offer. Now, when I go into the remarketing portion on the other videos, these are the people that I want to go for, right? Those that came watch the video, but did not contact us, right? Or maybe even I want to go after those that watched it 50% of the way and didn't contact us. It's really up to you, right? Use your strategies in your mind, how you, feels will work the best in your scenario and your market. But this data right here allows us to see, Hey, you know, they watch over 25%, you know, on this section, it was 83 people watch over 25%. It almost cuts in half, right? It almost cuts in half to where, you know, only 45 of them reached the 50% mark. So that, there's, that's a pretty big drop off a 50% drop off. Nothing huge, nothing, dramatic that's going to you know make us change what we're doing it's just information that allows you to know okay perfect well let me go back into my video say it was 30 seconds let me see what i said within the first seven and a half you know eight seconds is it intriguing is it enticing them you know, are they being informed does it get their attention you know, are they is there a dull spot and then you could kind of notice to where maybe that that next gap from, you know, eight seconds up to the 15 or 16 second mark, you might be able to notice, ah, oh, yeah, I did kind of, you know, I did kind of hit a lull right there and I could see where people were dropping off from there, right? So in the beginning of your video, you always want to get their attention, right? So the ad itself that we've created will help do that, but at the same time, keep their attention within the video. Right. So please keep those things in mind and you don't have to go. It doesn't have to be elongated, um, you know, professional setup type of video. I mean, if you have the equipment, by all means, right on, please utilize it. But people like organic things. Right. And, and in the very beginning of your video, the first, you know, seven seconds. Announce who you are, you know, give give the people an understanding of who you are and what you're about, but don't, don't focus on you, right? I mean, let them know who you are, give yourself some credibility and then move on, right? Why, why do they want to listen to you? Well, you've been doing, you know, mortgage loans for over a decade or you've written over X amount of loans or whatever that might be, but something that's going to get their attention and keep them interested, right? Don't go into all the details right in the beginning because we want them to watch all the way, right? Sort of like a movie, right? They, they, when these guys go out and they start to uh, entice us to watch the movie, they show us little clips of the movie, which they feel will be the most exciting. And in most movies cases, in the movie itself, a lot of the story happens in the beginning, right? To keep your attention through the whole 
movie itself and keep you interested, right? If they, you know, did not keep you into the video, into the movie that they're watching, or excuse me, that they're wanting you to watch, then why would you stay the rest of, you know, the 120 minutes to watch it? So Hollywood does a very good job at setting those things up and kind of keep those things in mind too, right? We're talking to other human beings. We don't have to inundate them with stats. You know, we don't have to tell them how, you know, incredible, incredible, excuse me, that our portfolio is. And, you know, it doesn't have to be long winded. Definitely give yourself some credibility, but then move on because once again, statistically, they say that our attention span nowadays is between seven and eight seconds. So they say a goldfish can hold a longer attention span than us. So be quick. Attention, get them interested, help them make a decision to then take an action. So these things in the video portion, I, I believe, are very critical and can help you along the way, right, to understanding where people are dropping off and to just see, wow, man, I, I mean, I got these people to watch all 36 seconds of this video. They're, they're interested. I mean, if somebody takes 36 seconds of their lives and it might not sound like a big commitment, but remember folks, we're on Facebook. This is intrusive advertising, right? This is not a search engine to where somebody goes to Google and types in, I need a mortgage in your area, whatever that might be. They're on Facebook trying to, maybe find out what their friends are doing, family doing, maybe post some images on themselves, on their daily activities. Who knows what their objective is, but anytime that you're able to pull somebody's attention all the way through your video and your message, I mean, give yourself a pat on the back because you're doing something right. Now, you might not be getting a lot of action because maybe timing is a factor, and that's where we will go into remarketing because just because somebody's seen our ad and the information for the very first time doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to take an action right then and there. So go back over here and app engagement is not relevant. Carousel engagement. When you're utilizing carousel ads, I'll just click on it. There will be nothing that appears, but what will happen is it's interesting. It pulled this up, but in carousel, if we had uh, several different cards, and what I mean by cards is the images themselves, right? So under, under carousel, like we had uh, gone over in one of the previous uh, modals, excuse me, modal module. Wow, I don't know why I keep saying that. I apologize. I show you what a carousel ad is. And you can see how you set each one up with its image, its own specific messaging. This is where that information will reveal itself. And then here we have the, this one. It would kind of be your go-to, right? Because the default is the performance, but the performance and clicks, it gives a little bit more information than just the performance, right? You see there's no scroll bar at the bottom. So performance and clicks allows you to, like it says, see the clicks, what people are doing. What's your click-through rate, right? That, that's a big factor. Know those things and look at those things, and you could get an idea of, hey, you know, I have a 5% click-through rate, which means for every 100 times that your ad is seen, five people take an action, which is good. Not bad. I mean, every industry is going to vary. Some people have a lower click-through rate, 1%. Some people have click-through rates as high as 15%. It really just depends on your audience, your message, and the need for your product or service. So in here... As you can see, we'll be able to hover over the eye and it'll show you, hey, this is all your clicks, right? This is your click-through rate overall. This is your actual cost per click, each specific one, uh, every click as a whole, right? That they've grouped together. And what I mean by that, the actual cost per click is, if somebody goes in there and actually likes your, your ad, right, or makes a comment on it, they've clicked and they've engaged. That's why you'll see that this CPC, and it says all right here, is 31 cents. Whereas over here, we have a cost per link click of 77 cents. So the difference between the two is, on the ad, somebody actually clicked learn more. And for every time that somebody does that, it's 77 cents. Now, as you see here, the click-through rate for the link click-through rate is 2.04%, where the overall 
interaction click through rate is roughly five. So that's why you'll see those different types of numbers there. Obviously the link clicks, it explains what that is right there. And the CPM, now, as it says right here, it's per thousand impressions. So it's just letting you know, hey, per 1,000 impressions, this is how much it's gonna cost you. So it'll allow you to just give you a better understanding of how well your ad is performing or underperforming. So, in the cross device, as you see here, there's this is some next level things to where when you put your tracking in place for actual websites, right? If you actually had a website conversion, like maybe you have a website and you are tracking any time that somebody fills the form out there, this information will reveal itself there. But being that we're utilizing the lead gen ad through Facebook, none of this information is gonna show up there. So messenger engagement, we don't have a messenger in, um, response for this. So there is no cost there or any data. And offline, if you had set up conversions for somebody to come into your business, this is where Facebook would track that too. Now, this next portion, this customized column, as soon as it's opened, it's gonna kinda be a little mind blowing because there's quite a bit of different things, right? Now, by default, what we were just looking at are the settings within Facebook, right? If you want more information, obviously, as you can see here, they allow us to put in as many things as we want, right? So these columns behind here can get pretty thick if, if we wanted to keep adding things to it. I mean, there's so many options. Let's just go through and I'll just do it as an example and let us see it. But you have the ability to, to manage and understand many, many, many different things, right? So if there's something that you did not see within any of the other settings or with any of the other performance options, most likely everything will be right in here, right? Now, as we go through and work on some of the bonus videos as far as tracking, you'll be able to implement your conversion information within this portion too. So for the sake of this video, if you recall, I had gone through, I'll just scroll down. I mean, there's, there's, this goes on and on and on. This is why Facebook only has those default ones or the pre selected options because literally, I mean, imagine if they tried to add all these columns in the information on the back, it would just, it would take you so long <laughs> to be able to sort through anything. So if you recall, I had clicked some of this engagement clicks, uh, check mark, excuse me, some of the page post information. Go here. Now, it opened up all of these things, right? That's why it's having me scroll, 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 and scroll. So if I wanted more information on a specific action that people took or some specific information, this is where you'd be able to put it within the custom portion. Oops, there we go, sorry about that. Go through and you know knock yourself out for whatever you want. Anything that you know you want to know more about, it's right here. It's right here. So now that I've inundated you with all of the data breakdown, I'm going to move on to a couple other things. So we'll see you soon.